Hi, what's up guys? So today I have a very special announcement. I'm actually going ahead and partnering with eFlex Fuel. They were very generous and went ahead and sent me an E85 conversion kit. So I'll go ahead and be installing that today. However, a few benefits to running E85 is more horsepower and more torque. So if you do plan on doing any performance mods, I suggest running E85 on your car. Um, if you wanna go ahead and check them out, I will be posting their website down below in the description. Um, this is actually, this conversion kit was meant for my 2015 GT Mustang, so I'm really excited to go ahead and install that and see the results. Um, however, let's go ahead and get that started. You guys are going to want to go ahead and come all the way over here where your fuse box is. You're going to want to go ahead and crack it open. And you guys are going to see a bunch of fuses. Don't worry because I have my owner's manual handy. So I went ahead and opened it to where my fuses are. And as you guys can see, it literally says right here, fuel pump 49. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys close up so you guys can go ahead and see. So there's a bunch of numbers here. Number 49 is right there. And that means it's this fuse. There we go. So now that the fuel fuse is out, I'm gonna go ahead and place it right here just so I don't end up losing it. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank my car a few times just so we know that it's fine so now i'm just gonna go ahead and take off my jewelry because it's about to go down so you're gonna want to go ahead and remove this cover engine cover off it should just go ahead and pop off now you want to go ahead and move these over on both ends you have the 10 millimeter socket you're gonna want to go ahead and take those off I've encountered a problem. I need um, the 10 mil and then a ratchet. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Careful, you don't wanna break that. And then there's a foam that you wanna go ahead and also remove. So then you want to come over on this side, you want to go ahead and remove that other bracket. Taking off foam should not be this hard though. It's literally, ow. Okay. So right here is going to be my fuel line. So it should pop up like that. Okay, so once you've pushed these together and then it releases, you're able to finally go ahead and push back the fuel line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this around. <gasps> that was terrible. I had removed the foam. I have access to disconnecting the fuel injectors now. So here I'm gonna go ahead and use these pliers because obviously with my nails I can't reach in. Okay, there. After um, disconnecting the fuel injectors, I have my computer right here. And I have this now connected, which these are going to connect to the fuel injector. Okay, so now that this hose is off, you want to go ahead and... grab the hose that eflex fuel provided you in the kit you're gonna need to eat your ethanol sensor so gonna be needing the straight one as well as one that looks like this and it's more angled they both have o-rings on them so you want to go ahead and actually lube it so the o-ring doesn't get messed up there's some motor oil i'm just gonna go ahead and put that on there and lube it once you've successfully put it in you're gonna go ahead and slide over the clamp. I've lubed the connector and I have the clamp right here. I wanna go ahead and connect it to this fuel line. You should just hear that click and it's on there. It's not gonna slide off unless you push that button off. Now with the Phillips screwdriver, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that clamp. Nice and tight. 
I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and cut about, I wanna say, to here. And you wanna cut as straight as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and put that hose to the side. I'm gonna take off these covers. Go ahead and grab the straight connector. Make sure you go ahead and lube it again. Just go ahead and slide it into that hose. Make sure the clamp's on there. And now you're gonna repeat the process of tightening the clamp. If it's on there pretty tight, you wanna go ahead and lube the ethanol sensor and connect it to the connector. Use the tube or the hose that went ahead and provided you and then do the same. Make sure the clamp is on there. The connector is already looped, so you just want to go ahead and slide it in there. You're going to go ahead and repeat the process of tightening the clamp with a Phillips screwdriver. The next step is cutting it. So now that it's cut off, you want to go ahead and connect it or slide in the clamp. Slide in that connector. Head and connect it. Make sure you hear that click. Once it's on there now, I ended up twi or disconnecting it and reconnecting it because this just fits my car a lot better. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie it to this. For other cars, I'm not sure, um, you might be needing a multimeter. However, thankfully for S550, S550 owners, we already have um, the connector saying the positives and which ones are the negatives. The way it's going to go ahead and be plugged in, when I turn it over, I want the positive to be on, on this side, the closest to me. So, because I'm going to end up turning it over, you just go ahead and slide those in. Okay, so I ended up figuring out that it was way easier to go ahead and connect the wiring or these the positives the negative one into this before actually going ahead and connecting it completely. I've got these two done. I'm gonna continue to do all four. Now I just go ahead and connect this inside. All right, that's it for this side. Let's go ahead and start doing the other side. But there is like a rubbery piece. You just go ahead and rip that off. And now you want to go ahead and connect these to that. So you just got to go ahead and line it up. Okay, now that they're all connected, we're going to go ahead and do the other side. Basically on this side, you already have all the fuel connectors or the fuel injectors out. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process I did on that side. When using these, I'm gonna go ahead and line it up just to make sure it's going in the right way or the way I'm gonna end up plugging it in. I'm gonna line it up straight and then connect it. It should just slide in. So if it doesn't slide in, that means you're, it's not going in right. And you don't wanna go ahead and force it either because it could create some issues. If you want to have it more neat, you could get this wire loom protector. Um, it's not necessary because they're already pretty um, covered up, but this will just make it a lot easier to organize within the car or within the engine bay. Right, so we're just going to go ahead and finally put the foam back on. bolts and do the same and start tightening it this 
is where I will be grounding. My connection, my new connection. So I just tried to start up my car and y'all don't forget to connect your fuse because I was really a dummy and I forgot to put my fuse back in, but it's all set now. All right guys, so I finally turned it on. There's no fuel leakage, so that's awesome. I went ahead and downloaded the eFlex Fuel app. So now I just go ahead and scan devices. It's gonna be the eFlex Fuel. So it's successfully connected meaning that I successfully converted my car to E85. All right guys, so I finally made it to the gas station. I'm gonna go ahead and start pumping E85. They do have the yellow pump here at Chevron, so that indicates that they carry E85. Bro, this is so cool. Period. All right, one quick thing. Right before I leave the gas station, I want to go ahead and actually put one of these on my car. Just so people know, you know? And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there. Let's run her up. I'm so excited. I don't know if my camera's gonna hold. My boyfriend said I'll notice the difference right away. But... just to see its full potential um besides that thank you so much for watching i really love sharing my own experience and i hope this inspires others to go ahead and convert to e85 it's not i don't want to say it's easy and i don't want to say it's hard it's in between depending on how experienced you are on working on cars i'm not that experienced i just watch youtube videos and do it myself so if you're a little bit more hands-on, then you're probably gonna do a great job. But as for me, I had to go to the store, come back, go to Angelo, come back. Like, I just went to too many places, literally. I went to Harbor Freight, like, three times or twice. It was, it was a little bit hectic, but that's why it turned dark so quick, because I ran out of time. And I started at, like, what? 3 p.m. at like 2 p.m. so I ran out of time but obviously it took me a while and also because I am recording so I have to take pauses in between so it's fine honestly I don't mind sharing my experience and I really do enjoy working on my cars so I hope you guys enjoyed if you enjoyed this video as well go ahead and put a thumbs up and if you want to go ahead and subscribe please do I always appreciate y'all. Um, just so you guys can stay tuned, I will be posting a lot more content involving car installations, track days, vlogs. I don't know, anything you can think of, honestly. But I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.